Welcome to the Data Cloud video series brought to you by Salesforce. My name is Simon Connock. I'm a Data Cloud instructor here at Salesforce. In this video, we will learn about identity resolution and unified profiles. Now, once you've successfully ingested and mapped your data in Data Cloud, it's time to match and reconcile your data and create a unified profile you use across all your systems. Why do you need unified profiles? Well, you know, different systems capture different contact attributes, such as emails, phone numbers, social media handles. Identity resolution unifies all of this data by resolving discrepancies and creating what we refer to as a single source of truth. The easiest way to think about unified profiles is by picturing it as a key ring. Now, every key ring or unified profile has its own universally unique identifier, or UUID. The key ring represents multiple records from various data sources that have been linked together via rules that you establish. Each key on the key ring is one of these matched records of the unified profile. You want to create a unified profile in Data Cloud to get an accurate and cohesive view of your customer. You do this by using the identity resolution process with rule sets to match and reconcile customer profiles across different data streams. The goal of this process is to accurately identify, match, and merge records that correspond to the same individual or entity, ensuring that all of the information about a customer is accurate and consolidated for your unified view of, of each customer. Now, first, you need to understand your data and what data points each data source includes. Next, configure your matching rules to define the criteria that link individual records from those different data sources. Then set up the reconciliation rules to choose what data will be selected when data sources conflict. Reconciliation rules specify how to select the best value for saving to the unified profile in the event of conflicts. However, they don't apply to contact points such as email or phone numbers, which will still remain part of the unified profile and are accessible for creating activations for segments. Lastly, you need to validate your results. You work through your resolution summary results and check that records have been correctly assigned to the correct unified profile. It's very important to understand that identity resolution is an iterative process. It may take a few tries, maybe many tries, to get your matching and reconciliation rules working the way that you want. You understand your data. Now, very important to understand that a unified profile from Data Cloud is not the same as what's often referred to as a golden record. A golden record merges the best data really into a single view of a customer. A Data Cloud unified profile, on the other hand, creates a much more complex and actually comprehensive customer view, integrating data from diverse sources and systems and maintaining a complete data lineage that extends beyond the contact details to include preferences, behaviors, interactions. As you perhaps can see, resolution rule sets are pivotal to identity resolution. Let's review some you know, key points about them. Firstly, a rule set contains match and reconciliation rules. Such a rule set can be scheduled to run daily after being published, or it can actually be run manually on an ad hoc basis. Deleting a rule set removes all the underlying unified customer data. How do you select the best data to include in your unified profiles? Glad you asked. You establish the matching rules that set the criteria for determining which individuals should be linked to each other. When at least one match rule is true, two individual records are matched. Reconciliation rules resolve what value to use for those matched records when there are conflicts. For example, do you want the most recent, the most used, or something else? Let's see this in action. Let's create a rule set using email and party identification for matching. I want you to go to the Identity Resolutions tab to create a new rule set that we'll name main. Select default for the data space. We only have one data space. It's an easy choice. Individual is the primary data model object. Leave the rule set ID field blank. Now we need to configure the rule set. Make sure the run jobs automatically option is disabled. We'll enable it later. Take a look at the list of output objects that will be generated once the rule set is created. Save your settings. Now we need to add matching rules to the main rule set. If you're not already there, go to the Identity Resolution tab and click Main to open the rule set. Under Match Rules, click Configure. 
configure the match rule with the properties that you want, depending on your use case. Take a look at the available rules. Notice that you can also create a custom rule, should you so desire. Here, we are just going to choose fuzzy name and normalized email, one of the out-of-the-box rules. Notice this option to add criteria. When we want to match based on fuzzy name and normalized email and exact birth date, we will select those. We want to match them even if the date of birth is blank. You can see that you can join these rules by AND operators. When you're finished, select Next, and don't forget to click on Save. Similarly, you can create custom rules. Let's take a look at the custom rules that were created for our use case for matching records with the same party identification type, name, and number. Configure the reconciliation rule and use the source priority for email and individual. Enable the rule set to run automatically. Then save. Once the rule set processing completes, you'll be able to see a summary outlining the counts of sources and matched individuals, as well as the total number of unified profiles created. Defining criteria guides the matching process. If you want more accuracy, add more criteria. If you want more matches, reduce the number of criteria. Identity resolution creates unified account and unified individual objects to store unified profile data. You can see that unified link objects establish the relationships between the source data and our unified profile data. Now, there is a statistic called the consolidation rate, or CR. This is a metric that shows how source profiles are grouped to form unified profiles. It's a little tricky. To calculate it, subtract the number of unified individuals divided by the number of source individuals from one. For example, if you have 10 source records, and from those 10 source records, you end up creating seven unified profiles based upon your rule set, the consolidation rate would be 30%. It's very important to understand that there's really no fixed standard. There's no fixed target for consolidation rate, as it depends on industry requirements, business specific, it depends on your data, really. To adjust the consolidation rate, consider adding or removing match rules. The consolidation rate reacts to rule sets for matching, so it's important to set them carefully. If a source profile is marked as known, the unified profile is known. Anonymous unified profiles are only made from other anonymous profiles, which are created from unidentified sources. The is anonymous field, an individual data model object, or DMO, determines the anonymity of status during data ingestion. Overgrouping happens when individuals are merged without clear criteria, often leading to including individuals who should really be kept separate. Modifying the unified individual page is necessary because the default page doesn't show related data linked to a unified individual profile during identity resolution. We do this from the Profile Explorer tab. Select default as the data space, unified individual in the object selector. Select the last name attribute and then enter the name. We'll search fries, or maybe freeze, who knows, and click view to review the details for that individual. Next, we want to edit this page setup to show the data linked to a unified individual by identity resolution. Edit the page and drag the data cloud profile related records component from the left hand side that you want to display. Select the fields and drop it below the existing component on the page. Add the properties to the configuration on the right of the page, the data space, the unified individual DMO and link. Then select the fields. We're adding external record ID, first name, last name, and date of birth. Repeat those steps for three other related data model objects and add the fields unified individual contact point email, contact point phone, contact point address. When we're done, we'll save and then activate the page, designating it as the org default. In this demo, we'll show how the rule set we created in a unified profile matched on fuzzy first name, exact last name, and exact birth date. 
Let's go to the Identity Resolutions tab and see what rules have been defined in our org. Next, go to the Profile Explorer tab. Select Default as the data space. Select Unified Individual in the Object Selector. Select the last name attribute and enter the name Stevenson with a V and execute a search. Notice that there are three records returned. Let's view the record for Carl Stevenson. Notice there are two individual records linked to this unified individual. The data source object value shows what data source each individual record is coming from. Contact is ingested from Salesforce, and the object below, beginning with S3, is the profile ingested from Amazon S3. Notice that even though the first name is spelled differently, identity resolution still linked these two individuals together because the last name and exact birth date values matched exactly. Now notice the one unified individual contact point email record linked to this unified individual. Now let's look at a no match result, something different. If you're wondering why two records did not match, go to the Profile Explorer tab and search for the last name Stevenson again, still with a V. Notice that Will and Wilfredo have the exact same date of birth, the same last names, and their first names are similar, but why didn't they match? Well, because in this case, the first names are just not similar enough based upon medium precision fuzzy matching for identity resolution to create one unified profile. So even though the birth date and last name match exactly, Will does not match Wilfredo close enough per the fuzzy name rule. Let's analyze a match based on party identification. Here, there is an exact match based on the rewards program ID and retail membership numbers. You can see three party identification records with the same RAVG retail membership values in the identification number. The values in party are the same values you see for individual ID based upon the unified individual page. This illustrates matching records with the same party identification type, name, and number to create one unified profile. This matching model with individual attributes, contact points, and party identifiers can result in fewer matches. However, leads to higher certainty in individual uniqueness, protects individual privacy, and minimizes risks of data overlap. Excluding names in households may merge distinct individuals, though, inaccurately reflecting the household. In business settings, you know, disregarding names may merge records for different individuals, leading to inaccuracies, what we call overgrouping, which can cause a loss of data granularity, hindering individual distinction. This matching rule model could lead to overgrouping. You may end up merging too much, particularly with shared contact points like phone numbers or emails. This could mean grouping all household members into a single profile, which might not be right. To ensure accurate profiles, avoid overgrouping, match on multiple criteria, and use additional data points like names or emails. Keep these considerations in mind for effective identity resolution. Identity resolution is all about bringing data together from different sources to form one unified profile. Matching rules help merge records for the same person while Reconciliation rules remove any conflicts in the data. The results of the identity resolution process can be examined using Data Explorer and Profile Explorer to make sure the profiles from different sources look consistent. To learn more, be sure to check out our other videos. You can also search for topics in Salesforce Help or come join us on the trail at trailhead.salesforce.com. Thanks for watching.